Hey, welcome to Fringe FM Tech Talks. I'm your host, Matt Ward, and every week we break down a cutting edge exponential technology that's advancing faster than humanity can keep up. We discuss where we're headed, what's happening, why it's happening, the pros and cons, the implications, and then make some deep, deep predictions on the nature of reality and what will be happening with us. Today we're going to be talking about 3D printing, which has been super exciting and incredibly overhyped, and we're going to get into the nitty gritty and discuss why it's been slow, where we're headed, and some potential implications that most aren't talking about. But before we do that, this is Fringe FM. If you haven't checked out Fringe FM, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Just hit that subscribe button right there. Trust me, you want to do it. This is going to be fun. We discuss the most cutting edge technologies. We have the smartest folks on in the fields of AI, genetics, space, quantum computing. You name it, if it's something that's drastically affecting the future, we're having those type of folks on, the ones that are almost impossible to talk to and having hour, hour and a half long conversations that are completely captivating on what they're working on and better yet, how what they're working on converges with these other exponential technologies. You can never really understand where you're headed until you understand the convergence of everything. And that's Fringe FM. Check us out at fringe.fm and subscribe. We're on YouTube. We're on iTunes, fringe.fm slash iTunes. We're on Stitcher, fringe.fm slash Stitcher. You can go to our site and subscribe via any player that you want, fringe.fm slash Android, if you have Android and want to subscribe to the podcast. But today, before we jump into it, I always like to have something that I'm excited about, what I'm pumped about today. And the reason for that is primarily because, I mean, every day can be a drag. If you're just working and grinding, you've got to have something you get freaking excited about. And the one thing I'm excited about right now is these live streams. This is something that we've been experimenting with. This one's actually recording because the live stream went terribly wrong. The microphone didn't sound good. And you know what? Yours truly was not that great on the video. Well, we're getting a little bit better at that. But what I'm excited about is the fact that we can do live streams now on Facebook Live and YouTube, which means we're able to syndicate us two channels at once. That's incredibly valuable as a guy who's built startups and who helps startups grow for a living. The ability to syndicate your content across multiple channels and bring people into your ecosystem in multiple ways. Maybe someone's on Instagram, maybe they're on Twitter, maybe they're on Facebook, you don't know. But if you're able to really easily and effectively project yourself across multiple mediums, you know that you've got your bases covered. So we're covering our bases. But now let's jump into 3D printing and let's talk about an overview. So who grew up playing with Legos? I know I did. You would put this here and here and you would build a tower. I was actually building a, building a castle with my son a few days ago with the library and you're just stacking all of these little pieces in place. Well, that's a bit how 3D printing works. It's a machine that puts the right thing in the right place every single time. Except when they break, of course. Well, 3D printing is a really interesting and industry. We, we all know printers. We can print stuff out and it looks nice and we pass it around. But the ability to build something with a printer, that gets interesting because suddenly we democratize access to creation. It's not just the craftsman that's able to build something. You break something on your car. You don't have to go to the auto shop. The implications are enormous. That said, well, 3D printing has been really hyped. It's a $391 million market. That's pretty freaking small. That's not something that's really VC scale at this stage. So as an investor, typically we like to look for something that's at the very least a billion dollar market cap because uh, market size, because if it's not, then it's really hard to build something that's really large and can hit those exponential returns. That said, 3D printing is projected to be projected. We'll put air quotes on that because projections can always be wrong. It's projected to be a $50 billion industry by 2025. Now, that's a massive, massive change in just a couple of years. That's, that's, I mean, shit, that's like doubling every year. So we may not hit that, but even if we do have some pretty serious growth, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really, really interesting. So in terms of 3D printing, while it could be awesome, so far it's kind of sucked. We've gone through a boom bust cycle. This is typical of technology. Something starts to show some promise. You get a couple of technologies out there, maybe a startup, investors, etc. They talk about it, they hype it up, they get so freaking excited because they think it's gonna be something. But they're just too early. They're there before the market's ready, they're there before the product's ready, and it just does not take off. We've seen this so many times over and over. I mean, you had social media in MySpace, it didn't quite work. There were probably a billion Google companies, uh, searching engine companies before Google, but they just didn't quite get it right. Or the market just wasn't quite ready. We have Google Glass, which we'll be talking about augmented reality in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Those certainly missed. And yet now augmented reality is becoming major with Pokemon Go and some other exciting stuff. Well, 3D printing is kind of in this, this trough of disillusionment, so to speak. So 
it's a dip, it goes up. If it's something with promise, it always comes down and then it can spike back up if it's something that actually is going to change the world. If it's not, then all bets are off, but 3D printing has the ability to change the world. Why it hasn't so far? A, it's wicked expensive and slow. If you've ever seen these 3D printers work, and you can go to pretty much any university around the world, and a lot of them will have 3D printers in there building things. Here in Toronto, they even have them in the library, so people can build some stuff. They can experiment a little bit, and it's fun. But you know what? Right now, it's pretty much just fun. It's something for DIY people and hobbyists to build stuff and kind of enjoy, but not really do that much with. There are some industrial uses now, and those are much more actually than the consumer uses, but it still has a really long way to go. It's mainly used for printing one-off parts, like we said, like something breaks in your little model and you want to fix or replace that. That's great. But the thing is, you need special resins for the printing. So typically we're printing with some type of plastic resin, a, a polycarbonate, etc. That's getting melted into a nice little spool. Imagine like those, those cool Play-Doh things you had, you would squish them and then the hair would come out. It's kind of like making those and then using that to create something. That's 3D printing. It's designing based off of the, the small scale. It's not nano, but hopefully we will get to nano. We'll talk about that in a sec. Now, something really interesting about 3D printing is, uh, surely you've seen these 3D printed organs, etc. They don't always work, but we're starting to get to the point where they actually do work, and we're growing organs that can be used in animals and humans, etc. as long as you, they're not rejected. Nice thing about not being rejected is they don't have typical immune, um, immune responses for let's say a transplant of my heart to yours, etc., because you don't have to worry about blood types. You're growing something specifically for someone and you can plan all that out in advance. 3D printing, let's talk implications. So as we get towards a world where 3D printers do become more ubiquitous, there are more around us, they move faster, and they're cheaper in terms of not just the capital cost of getting started, but specifically the printing cost. Right now the resin's pretty expensive. But as we get closer and closer to that, more and more manufacturing is going to be replaced by 3D printing. What is the point of having a factory with people working there or robotic arms or Elon sleeping on the floor and all of this when we can just have a device that does it for us? That simplifies things a lot. There's a lot less room for error and it also makes it way less capital intensive. It also kind of disrupts the entire supply chain, which we'll talk about a little bit more in the future. But we also do have the possibilities of 3D printed food. If you want to just eat something. I mean, we've seen Star Trek and they have replicators. That's basically just a really good nanotech level 3D printer that's able to put something out with specific qualities by combining specific things in specific locations so that suddenly it's edible and tasty and healthy. Well, that is a bit far off right now, but that's totally doable. It makes complete sense. If you're able to if you're able to build something on a nano level scale, then you are able to eventually do that as a society. So in order to reach that, we need to reduce the size of 3D printing while increasing the scale. As we do that, we're able to have more and more access to 3D printing and eventually get into that nanotech level. So nano is uh, 10 to the 10 to the nine, negative ninth, so 10 to the negative ninth of a meter. It's, it's really freaking small. It's down pretty much getting, getting into the, the quantum scale in terms of things that you're dealing with. But as we are able to design on a quantum scale, we still can't manufacture very well, but we are building on a quantum scale. So if you check out fringe.fm or you look on YouTube, you're able to find, we just did an interview with the leading graphene company, Vorbeck. They raised 20, $30 million to transform the world with graphene, something that's stronger than steel and lighter than a feather. Well, you know what? They're doing it because they're controlling the molecular makeup of the product they're working with, graphene. It's incredibly interesting. Check it out, fringe.fm. But anyways, 3D printers. We have a lot of a lot of potential, but also some potential problems as well. If these are all connected, well, when we have connected devices, as we've realized with Equifax and a billion other hacks, not to mention giving up your data and privacy, there are the potential of cybersecurity threats. So what are the implications of that? There, those aren't very good implications. But we also have the ability, we don't really understand how intelligence and consciousness emerges, other than it seems to be emergent, as you have a su sufficient level of complexity designed via simplicity, you seem to have some type of emergence. If we get an emergence like that with AI or with robotics, then 3D printers can kind of become like the baby making toy of, of AI and start printing out robots. That's kind of your Skynet type scenario, which I mean, most people that are familiar with the space say it's not very likely. I don't think it's very likely either, but it is something to bring up. Um, the driving factor of the ability to scale up 3D printing is going to be the materials that we're able to print with and the ability to recycle. So one thing that I found interesting, a company that I had actually, I, I talked to about uh, investing, they're using recycled plastic. They're recycling physical 
plastic bottles, like things you pull out of the ocean becomes some asshole threw a plastic bottle into the ocean, recycling that into plastic resin that can be used for 3D printers. That's really freaking cool because that cuts out massive amounts of pollution in the world. The thing is, there's still not that much scale when it comes to 3D printing to be able to actually use all the plastic that we're producing for 3D printers. It's kind of a chicken and the egg problem. We need to get people more excited. We need to get the price down. And to be able to do that, we need to actually have people more excited. And we, we need to work on that a little bit, but it could be it could be huge as we use it on a larger scale because right now recycling is not that effective. So like for instance, if you're gonna use a Starbucks cup, it's 30 times more efficient on a, on a pollution and environmental impact uh, perspective to just reuse the cup. So let's say they could wash it and give it to the next person. 30 times more effective than recycling. Yeah, that's a big stat. 30 times more effective. But right now it's not feasible to do something similar with 3D printing just because of the, the processing costs, the scale, the demand, and procurement for these specific resins. As we have more 3D printers that we have democratize access. We've got plenty of people that are <laughs> they're quite passionate about their guns and they're very happy that they can 3D print guns. While that's problematic and there are a lot of um, risks associated with that, how do we think about IP and patents in a world where suddenly we can print things off? If the internet's taught us anything, it's that once something's created, we will torrent the hell out of it and use it however we want to. Well, how does that work if Apple designs a new iPhone and the specs go online and you can print out your own iPhone? Are you going to buy one from Tim Cook and pay way too much money and have to get some headphone adapters and things and all these little nukes and dongles? Or are you just going to take their design and then switch out one or two things so that you can have a headphone jack? I think that one's pretty obvious. Um, what about the new incentives of having 3D printers? Well, they're designers, maybe they're able to sell these different designs. They don't have to work for a company. They don't have to do a Kickstarter. Rather than that, they just design a product and then they release it to the masses and say, here you go. If you want it, print it out and give me five bucks, give me two bucks, give me 10% of whatever you make, et cetera, et cetera. It changes, the, it changes the business model. 3D printers have had a challenge taking off because 3D printers are a terrible business. It's like selling printers. Selling printers is a terrible business. No one wants to buy printers. Even printer companies don't want to sell printers. They want to give you a freaking printer and have you buy the ink and paper from them because that's where they make the money. It's the same thing with 3D printers. The money's in the resins and unlike with printers, the money will also be, I believe, in the IP. So creating some type of marketplace model of all of this different IP, all of these different products, etc. I need something, I can go to Ikea or I can go to products.products and download something and it prints in my 3D printer and I don't have to go anywhere and suddenly I'm set. Well, that changes e-commerce, that changes shipping, that changes a hell of a lot. The money's in the resins, the money's in the parts. 3D printing will be enormously important as humanity becomes spacefaring. So it costs $1,000 per kilogram to get stuff into space. $1,000 per kilogram. Do you wanna bring a, a bed up for it's $1,000 a kilogram? Do you wanna bring shoes? I mean, I'm going up naked. It's way cheaper, but in all seriousness, 3D printers are the only things that are going to be able to allow humanity to scale in space and grow. So asteroid mining has been pretty big. I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard a bit about it. It hasn't been super successful yet, but it's, it's moving. It's kind of the same chicken and the egg problem. But asteroid mining allows us to take goods, allows us to take raw material from asteroids, from the moon, from anything, etc., and use those to create products. Now, if we're able to use those and put that into 3D printers, we're suddenly able to print out home modules. We're able to print out space stations. We're able to print out enormously complex things that allow humanity to expand in the universe without having to launch something out of the gravity well that is Earth and pay $1,000 per kilogram. That's really, really big in terms of reducing the costs, both for shipping and time for products in space. So let's talk about the pros of 3D printing. Obviously, it's incredibly efficient when it comes to reducing shipping costs and emissions. If you can manufacture something versus having to take it out of the ground and then suddenly we create something, we refine it and then we ship it and we have packaging, we have to take off the packaging and there's way too many layers of packaging. We just throw out all that shit because they want to make sure they cover their butt. All of that is way, way, way more emissions than we actually need. If we're able to just take something and create from that something, well, we've cut out that whole process. We have faster access to products and custom access to products. So you want to buy an iPhone and engrave your name on it? Awesome. Well, if you want to do that and you're living in Tanzania and it's 10 years ago, that might be a little bit harder. Well, this allows people around the world to have access to the best of the best without having to worry about governments, restrictions, shipping, um, customs, etc. That has a, it has a major liberating effect for humanity. It also will liberate humanity because as we're able to produce like this and we don't have these shipping costs, everything's cheaper. So if you can buy everything and as someone whose background is e-commerce and has done a lot of shipping from China, I can tell you a large percentage of what you're paying goes into the shipping costs. So being able to just cut that out on its own is huge.
being able to cut that out on the pollutions perspective, also huge. And what about the inefficiencies of broken parts? Your car breaks down, I don't know, your toaster needs a new part replaced. You can either buy an entire freaking new toaster because something broke, or you can print out this tiny little thing and pop it in your toaster and suddenly everything's good. That's way less junk in the junkyard, that's less trips to the store, that's less emissions from all of this, and that's, a, that's an all around better, faster, and more efficient. Even if it's like in a business, you can keep your business up and running versus having to shut it down for the day because a part on your assembly line broke. Um, space colonization is possible. We talked about that. It's not really possible without this because it's way too expensive. And 3D printed medicine, something else that's going to be pretty interesting is right now we have a lot of pharmaceutical companies and uh, oh God, I don't want to go into a rant on pharmaceutical companies. If you want to, if you want to learn a little bit more about 3D printed medicine and where we're headed, go to fringe.fm and search for Lee or Lee Cronin. We discussed the, the future of 3D printed medicine, personalized medicine, medicine on demand, how we're changing as a species through all of this. And it's going to be, it's going to be really, really interesting, but just the ability to say, wait a sec, I had my genetic test done and AI says that I shouldn't take this medicine because this has this added filler, which is going to make me feel shitty and have to poop my pants and just not be very good at my job and all this stuff. What if we change that and just tweak? Oh, oh, now it's printed out. So initially this will be done probably by pharma companies, probably by doctors, etc. on a larger scale. But I mean, as we get further along, there's no reason to think that we won't have personalized 3D printers where we can just download the file, not have to pay the extra, etc. and then be able to have personalized stuff. Other con, let's talk cons, the cons of 3D printing. Major capital cost for getting started. These 3D printers are not that cheap. They're pretty darn big and they take up some space and they require maintenance because you have moving platforms moving around and trying to make everything print out exactly where it should. Well, the more moving parts you had as someone who's an engineer or studied engineering, the more moving parts, the more duct tape you're gonna need because it's gonna be problems. And all of that leads to extra costs. Right now, it's largely underutilized because it's it's really not cost competitive. For certain large-scale production industries, it is a little bit more cost competitive to 3D print stuff, but still, it's not quite there yet. So that's going to be something that'll take a little bit of time to get there. 3D printing, it's going to decimate existing industries as we become more efficient and more, more cost-effective because suddenly you don't need shipping. Well, we were already getting rid of tuck driver's jobs. Well, now we really don't need them. We, you don't really need manufacturing because we were already getting rid of manufacturing jobs, but now you really don't need them. All of these things, a lot of them are jobs that kind of suck. Well, we're going to get rid of those jobs. Um, and now everybody's favorite part, predictions. But first, coffee, because you know what? Coffee helps me stay way wired. Mm. Predictions. Let's talk about the predictions. So as the technology of 3D printing advances, here's something that most people don't think about. Where does all of your stuff come from? It comes from China. Well, it's being manufactured over in China. There's people working in factories. Some of it's also having robot, uh, robots working in the factories, but all of this is leading to decreased costs. Certain people want to manufacture in America, which basically means you pay more for shittier quality. We don't need to talk about the politics of that right now. Anyways, things are manufactured overseas, and then we have large shipping containers that are placed on top of even larger shipping vessels that are shipped over here. They're shipped everywhere, and you see them moving around the world. Those are major sources of pollution around the world. Those cargo ships, huge. Some of the worst, but they're also kind of just moving stuff from A to B. If I can print my iPhone here, Apple doesn't have to manufacture 100 million in China and then ship them around the world. They just print them here, or I just print them here. Either way, all of that's cut out. So what happens to these shipping containers? What happens to all of these cargo ships? What happens to all of the jobs and money that go into this? What happens to the ports? What happens to all of this stuff that we suddenly don't need because everything is being created on demand where we want it? That's gonna be a massive, massive change for the world. And I think it'll be a big change for the better with some implications and possible negativity from the jobs. But what do we do with the containers? I've seen some interesting stuff in terms of, I mean, you see containers that are used now to build buildings or build temporary buildings. We could also use them for indoor farming. I mean, we've seen hydroponics for the, the funny guy in the movie that grows weed in his house, etc. But you can do the same thing with natural vegetables, fruits, uh, etc. Well, having a more distributed access to farming around the world, especially in more urban areas where we're able to democratize access, that's that's pretty interesting. I've seen, oh, what's his name? I want to say it's Kimball Musk, Elon Musk's brother, but I'm not positive on this one, is working on an initiative now to train people to be organic, healthy farmers and using uh, container ships to do it. So not container ships, using just the containers themselves. But interesting implications most people don't think about. What about for creators and designers? I mean, do I really want to design something and then have to manufacture it and then sell it? That's like slow. I mean, at least with Kickstarter, I can kind of sell it first. But with this, 
I can kind of also just design it and then let people buy it whenever they want. There's no capital cost that goes into this. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like dropshipping, which used to be big as something I was into for a while, and a lot of people were basically selling stuff and then you buy it from whoever you actually sells it and then shipping it to your customer and making a difference on the margin. Well, the same thing will happen with creators now that they're able to design things and not have to manufacture. They can make more money, they can cut out the middleman, they can get rid of all the shipping costs, they can deliver cheaper to consumers, better access, better products, etc. And they can make money doing it without having a boss. I, I want to say boldish prediction, 25% of goods will be 3D printed by 2035. So where do those numbers come from? That's a bit of a gut number based off of looking at the looking at the curves but i think as we move towards a world especially there's certain things that just don't make sense to be built they it takes time it takes money and it takes a lot of shipping inefficiencies for for certain products we're going to start manufacturing those much larger at scale in 3d printers around the world because you know what it just makes more sense 3d printing is something that just makes more sense it just hasn't quite made it there yet i think right now we're in that trough where we're kind of waiting the hype cycle is definitely down it's something that people are like oh man but if you really look at how technology progresses there's always that hype it always drops off that's the best time to drop to invest before the hype or right at the bottom when it's kind of like is this actually going to happen and then suddenly things start to take off because actually, yeah, this made a hell of a lot of sense. 3D printing makes a hell of a lot of sense. We're headed in that type of direction. I hope this has been helpful and interesting for you guys. If it has, be sure to hit that subscribe button right there. Share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, wherever else you guys are sharing things. That would be enormously beneficial for us because what I believe, what we believe at Fringe FM, Fringe FM is, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Fringe FM. We're fiscally sponsored. We're a nonprofit. We accept donations that are tax deductible, so you don't have to pay them to Uncle Sam. But why we're doing this is we think that by making the world and making people better educated about where the world is headed, giving them more prospects when it comes to their careers, their futures, etc., they'll be able to contribute more to the world. They'll be more successful. They'll make more money. And better yet, they'll do it while doing something they love and making the world a better place. Who wants a desk job being a freaking accountant or doing something that, I mean, it just kind of feels like arbitrage. I want people working on things that fucking matter because we have big fucking problems as humanity. And to be able to empower people to change that, that's really, really important. If you believe in something like that, fringe.fm. If you like this and want to support what we do, fringe.fm slash support. If this made your life better, happier, or you think it would for other people, share it around and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, fringe.fm slash iTunes. Leave a review, leave a comment on YouTube, hop on our next live stream, 1230 p.m. Eastern uh, Wednesdays or 6.30 p.m. Uh, Central European time. Hop on, have some questions, engage with us because we're trying to build a better community together. We're trying to build a better world together, but we need your help because you know what? We're not a huge team. We can try to make as much of a difference as we can, but the only way that humanity evolves and becomes better and builds a better world is if humanity works together. Until next time, I'm Matt Ward signing off. Cheers.